Everyone's talking about ChatGPT, so I had to give it a try. Let's see what it's capable of. So what is ChatGPT? Let's ask ChatGPT what it is. So it says it's a variant of the generative pre-trained transformer language model that is fine-tuned for chatbot style communication. I always wondered what GPT stood for. Generative pre-trained transformer. We're talking about Autobots or Decepticons. Sorry, it says it's part of OpenAI and the GPT-3 family. It goes on to explain what GPT-3 is. Uh, ChatGPT is specifically for conversations and can be used in chatbots. And it uses context-aware responses taking into account previous exchanges and conversation. Okay, well, maybe I don't want to read all of that. Let's ask it to summarize that into two sentences. So it's a variant of the GPT-3 language model fine-tuned for chatbot-style conversations, generates context-aware responses, taking into account previous exchanges in conversation. So that's much easier to understand, and it doesn't include any fluff. All right, so what can ChatGPT do? Well, when we first log into ChatGPT, this is what we're going to see. Now we can start out with some examples like explaining quantum computing in simple terms. We can ask it questions like, uh, got any creative ideas for a 10-year-old's birthday? Or how do I make an HTTP request in JavaScript? That's a good one. Uh, some capabilities. It remembers what users said earlier in the conversation. It allows users to provide follow-up corrections. And it's trained to decline inappropriate requests. That's good. Uh, some limitations. It may occasionally generate incorrect information. It may occasionally produce harmful instructions or biased content. And it has limited knowledge of world and events after 2021. Okay. So let's test it out. Uh, I'm going to ask it to write a short story about a dog named Jimmy. Let's see what it comes up with. It actually wrote a pretty cool story. Stick around to the end for story time. All right, let's ask it uh, what the difference is between Next.js 12 and Next.js 13. This response is actually kind of all over the place. First of all, Next 12 was released in October of 21. Uh, Next 13 was recently released in October of 22. So that's incorrect. And the bullet points are not all that accurate either. Some of them aren't. So remember at the start, it said that it had limited knowledge of events after 21. Uh, so that's probably what we're dealing with those limitations here. But I think it should have said, you know, I don't know anything about next 13 or something like that, instead of just making stuff up. So that's kind of weird. All right, so let's have chat GPT do something a little bit more challenging. I'm going to ask it to build a to do app using Next.js and Tailwind CSS. Let's see what it comes up with. OK, so it's giving us some instructions. It's even including some terminal commands that can get us started. So let's just follow these instructions and go from there. All right, so I'm going to go up here and copy this first command. Let's go over to the terminal, paste it in. All right, so we're going to create a next app in the folder called my to do app. So we'll let that run. All right, now we need to npm install Tailwind CSS. Sounds good. Let's run that. And if we're using yarn, it even gives us the yarn commands. That's pretty cool. All right, let's run the next command npx tailwind css init. All right. Now it says we need to import base.css. Hmm. I'm pretty familiar with tailwind css. I'm pretty sure this is not going to work, but let's just do what it says. All right, we're going to go over to uh, underscore app.js. Copy this and we'll paste it in here and see what happens. Let's just go ahead and run npm run dev and see what happens. All right, we'll open up our local host and yep, we're getting an error. All right, so let's instead of trying to figure this out on our own, let's copy this error message and paste it into chat GPT and see what it tells us to do. So we'll copy that and I'm going to say I'm getting the following error and I'll just paste that in and see what it tells me. All right, so it's given me some instructions, some things I can do to check and to see if Tailwind is installed properly and some other stuff. All right, so let's let's run through this. It's asking us to check to make sure Tailwind is installed. So let's run this command. And we can see here that, yep, Tailwind is installed. So we're good there. Let's move down and 
it's telling us to make sure that the base CSS is included in our app.js. We did that, but I don't think that's right. So let's move down. And now it's telling us to include imports in our style CSS. So this is one of the issues. Let's go over to our styles directory and global CSS. And at the top of this, let's just go ahead and import these uh, tailwind imports. We'll save that and let's go back to chat GPT and let's see what's next. All right. So yeah, we need to include tailwind CSS. Hmm. Yeah, that's, ah, I'm not going to do that. So we just need to include that global.css. So I'm just going to take out the base.css from the tailwind dist because we don't need that. Let's save that and let's restart our dev server and see what happens. And it's running now. We're not getting any errors. I'm not quite sure that the tailwind issues are fixed yet because we still have those default styles in there. But let's just continue on with the instructions that we're given. Let's see what happens. We're on step four now. It tells us to uh, create the to-do list component and some other stuff. Let's ask it to expand upon step number four and include the code for that. All right, so it is actually going through and creating a bunch of code for us. So let's give this a shot. And it actually stopped right in the middle of what it was doing. And this has happened to me several times. I'm sure they're still working the kinks out. So I'm just going to ask it to please continue where you left off. And there it goes. We've got some more code there. So let's look through this and see what we can do. All right, so it's asking us to create a to-do list JS file uh, component. So let's go over into our folder structure and we're going to create that components folder as well as the to-do list.js file. And then let's just copy all of this code and paste it in and just hope it works. <laughs> let's go down here and we also need to include that in our index.js file. So let's go over, pull up our index.js file, and we'll include the import for that component. And then we're going to replace the return. So instead, well, we'll leave the head in there, that's fine. And then instead of this main, let's put in uh, the to-do list along with a div with some tailwind classes. And we'll just remove uh, some of these unused imports. And let's go ahead and restart the dev server and see what happens. All right, so we're getting another error here. It looks like the to-do list component is, uh, you know what, that is actually my fault. I put the components folder all the way at the top and it's not in the project. So I need to move that into my actual project and now it's working. All right, so that wasn't ChatGPT's fault, that was mine. So let's go ahead and test this. We'll just type test and add and hmm, doesn't seem to be, doesn't really seem to be working. It's adding something, but um, the value is not being added to the list and it's not erasing the input like it should. So I actually can see what the issue is already, but let's go back to chat GPT and see what it says. Actually, we missed some of this where it has these Tailwind classes. Let me just copy this real quick, uh, put it over here. So we have all those Tailwind classes, which again, Tailwind's not quite working yet. So let's go back and ask ChatGPT about the issues with our items not showing up. So I'm gonna say the previous code is not displaying the added to do items and is not clearing the input after clicking the add button. All right, so seems like it's coming up with a new solution. Uh, but this code is actually exactly the same as the previous code. So I know that's not going to work. Let's let's tell it that the code is the same and uh, we're still having issues. Let's see what happens. Uh, so it looks like it's writing the exact same code again. Um, that's not good. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and correct it since I know what the issue is. Uh, the event.target.elements.item.value, that's incorrect. It should just be event.target 
item.value. So I'm just going to re remove the elements there and that should work just fine now. All right, so let's go back to our browser, test it out. And now it's working. Uh, so let's tackle the tail end issue now because tail end is obviously not working either. So if we go to the actual tail end docs, we can see that it's not all set up properly. We need to add some stuff to our config file. So let's copy that. We'll go over to our tailwind config.js file and add that into the content section. We'll save that. And that should be it. All right, so it missed a step there on tailwind, but now it seems to be working. Uh, we can test this out again. Uh, we'll add a couple of items here and we can remove them. And now it all seems to be working, but it needed quite a bit of human interaction to get it to work. AI is getting smarter and smarter, but is it going to take our developer jobs anytime soon? No. As you can see from these examples, ChatGPT is a really cool project, but it still needs a lot of work. It still needs human interaction to produce accurate results. And even then, it might be more work to use ChatGPT as an experienced dev uh, than just coding it without ChatGPT. So for sure, check out ChatGPT. Use it with caution, uh, but keep learning to code. And now, story time. There was once a little dog named Jimmy who lived with his family in a cozy little house in the countryside. Jimmy was a happy-go-lucky pup, always wagging his tail and eager to explore the great outdoors. One bright and sunny day, Jimmy's family decided to take a hike through the nearby woods. Jimmy was overjoyed at the prospect of running free through the trees and chasing after squirrels. As they walked along the winding path, Jimmy sniffed at every bush and tree, taking in all the wonderful smells of the forest. Suddenly, Jimmy heard a rustling in the bushes. He turned his head just in time to see a small bunny hop out onto the path. Without a second thought, Jimmy bounded after it. Barking excitedly, the bunny darted off into the underbrush, with Jimmy hot on its tail. As Jimmy chased the bunny deeper into the woods, he lost sight of his family. He didn't notice that they had stopped to take a break on a nearby bench. When he finally caught up to the bunny, he was panting and out of breath. Feeling proud of himself, Jimmy turned to head back to his family. But as he started to make his way through the trees, he realized he had no idea which way to go. He had been so focused on chasing the bunny that he hadn't paid attention to his surroundings. Panicked, Jimmy started to run in circles, barking and whining. He had no idea how to find his way back home. Just as he was about to give up hope, he heard a familiar voice calling his name. It was his mom. Jimmy ran towards the sound of her voice as fast as he could, his tail wagging with joy. When he finally reached his family, he collapsed at their feet exhausted but overjoyed to be reunited. From then on, Jimmy made sure to always stay close to his family on their hikes, no matter how tempting the bunnies might be. Thank you.